All right, let's decode AI in medical imaging. You wanted to know how reliable are those algorithms, really, when they're analyzing, you know, your MRI, your CT scan, all that mm -hmm. fascinating stuff. Turns out it's not as straightforward as, like, just showing a computer a bunch of pictures and saying, go diagnose. We've mm -hmm. got a stack of research papers right here. And mm -hmm. some of the findings about these out-of-distribution images, man, they are eye-opening. Out-of-distribution, that's a mouthful. It's that's a little me. technical sounding, but um, what it boils down to is actually pretty straightforward. Okay, good, because yeah. my brain already feels like it's doing MRI gymnastics over <laughs> here. So break it down. What's out-of-distribution all about? So imagine this. You're teaching a kid to ride a bike, right? And you're in a park. It's nice and safe. They get really good at it. But then you immediately take them to like a busy street. Totally different ball game, right? Out of distribution images are kind of like that busy street for AI. They're images that are different from the data the AI was trained on. So it's like the AI is encountering something new for the first time. And in medical imaging, those differences, they can be really subtle. Even a slight change in like how a scan is done, or if a patient moves just a little bit, that can throw the AI off. Wow. So it's not just about like looking at an X-ray versus an MRI. It's yeah. like the AI potentially missing those little nuances, those little details. Exactly. That could actually be really important. Yeah. And that's a big deal, especially when we're talking about, you know, diagnosing serious conditions. You wouldn't want your doctor to base your diagnosis on like a blurry x-ray, right? <laughs> so we need to be just as careful with AI right. and make sure that it's not getting tripped up by things that, you know, to us might seem insignificant. This research really drives home how crucial it is to get AI right in healthcare, Absolutely. especially <laughs> when it comes to something as complex as, you know, the human brain. So to really understand the challenges, this study got really creative. They didn't just use like any old medical images. They designed these elaborate tests with all these different... Um, out of distribution scenarios. They did. Yeah. And they threw, they kind of threw everything at these AI systems, almost like they were trying to make them crack under pressure. Okay, I'm hooked. Tell me more about this AI stress test. What'd they do? Well, they started with what I like to call a uh, synthetic hiccups. Synthetic hiccup. Basically, they digitally messed with the images, you know, to simulate real world problems. Okay. So think, uh, blurry images from a patient moving during the scan or weird shadows or even just you know different hospitals they have slightly different equipment right all things that could happen in real life yeah they weren't just like throwing random things at it they were trying to realistically challenge it see if it could tell the difference between a genuine medical issue and just like a technical quirk Exactly. And to make it even more interesting, they also brought in some real world curveballs. Oh, OK. Like, for example, they showed the AI brain scans that weren't meant for diagnosing the specific condition they were looking at. Oh, wow. Or they use scans where a common processing step, it's called skull stripping, hadn't been done. OK, I got to ask skull stripping. That sounds kind of intense. It sounds more dramatic than it is. Okay. It's basically just digitally removing the skull from the image. Okay. So the AI can focus on the brain, but you know, sometimes that step might be skipped or done a little differently at different hospitals. So the researchers wanted to know, would the AI get confused if it saw a skull in the picture when it wasn't expecting one? Fascinating. So they threw all these curveballs at the AI blurry ones, yeah. skull intact ones, what happened? Did the AI pass this stress test? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. To figure out how well the AI did, the researchers looked at something called uncertainty, which basically measures how confident the AI is in its own analysis. So if the AI is looking at a blurry image, a high uncertainty score would mean it's basically saying like, hold on, I'm not so sure about this one. Precisely. And what they found was that some AI systems, especially the ones that were only trained to look for the specific problem area, like a lesion, okay. they got tricked pretty easily by these uh, out of distribution images. Really? They were overly confident, even when they were wrong. Okay, so not all AI is created equal. Mm -hmm. What set the more successful AI systems apart? What was their like secret weapon? The AI that did a better job at spotting these tricky images had something the others didn't context. Oh, good. They were trained not just on images of the problem area, but on a much broader range of images of what a healthy brain looks like. So it's like having a doctor who's seen like thousands of brains, not just thousands of tumors. Right. They've got that bigger picture, that deeper understanding of like what's mm -hmm. normal and what's not. That's a great analogy. And because these AI systems had that broader training, they were more likely to say, hmm, 
This doesn't quite look right. Even if the problem area itself seemed clear at first glance, they were able to flag those out of distribution images and say, hey, I need more information. That's reassuring. But how do we actually know that the AI with this extra training performed better? Was it just a hunch or did the research have like hard data to back it up? It wasn't just a hunch, was it? Tell me they had numbers. Oh, they had the numbers. They used what's called an AUROC score. Mm -hmm. Don't worry too much about the technical jargon. Basically, it's a way to measure how well the AI can tell the difference between a normal image and one of those tricky out of distribution ones. Right. And guess what? The AI that had that extra training, that broader understanding of the brain, it scored way higher, sometimes even getting a perfect score. It's mm. like, you know, the difference between like passing a test with flying colors and just barely scraping by. That's incredible. But let's zoom out for a second. For those of us who aren't, you know, AI engineers, What's the big takeaway here? Why does this even matter for, like, you know, our health? It matters because it shows that context is key when it comes to AI and healthcare. Just like we wouldn't want a doctor to diagnose us based on a single blurry x-ray, we need AI that can, you know, see the bigger picture. That understands, like, the incredible diversity of the human body, right? This research gives us a roadmap for building more reliable and trustworthy AI, AI that's less likely to be fooled by those unexpected quirks that we see in the real world. And that's what's so exciting to me. It's like, yeah, there are challenges, but the possibilities are just incredible. Absolutely. And the fact that we're already thinking about these challenges, right, that we're designing studies to kind of push AI to its limits, I think that tells me we're on the right track. You've given us a lot to think about when it comes to the future of uh, AI and medicine. So if there's one thing our listeners take away from this deep dive, what should it be? I think the next time you hear about AI and healthcare, remember this. It's not just about the algorithms themselves, right? It's about the data, the context, that bigger picture. The more we can teach AI to see the world the way humans do, the more powerful a tool it will become. It's been amazing exploring this research with you. Thanks for taking us along for the ride. My pleasure. Until next time, stay curious.